Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be doing some MIP mapping. This will be a slightly shorter video than usual and I'm really sorry about that but I've been extremely busy this week preparing for the release of the dev kit for my game and I really didn't want to have to rush one of the larger topics like terrain generation so I thought that this week we could cover a fairly quick but still very important topic which is MIP mapping. So what is MIP mapping? MIP mapping is a technique that we can use to optimise the rendering of textures in our game. It works by using lower resolution textures to render objects that are far away from the camera. Using lower resolution textures speeds up the rendering process, and the use of these lower resolution textures isn't noticeable because they're only being used when the objects are far enough away from the camera. Objects rendered in front of the camera are still rendered using their original full resolution texture, but the further away from the camera that the object is rendered, the lower the resolution of the texture that is rendered on it. So, this might sound like it could be a bit tricky to implement, having to swap between textures depending on how far away the object is from the camera, but luckily for us, OpenGL can do it all for us. In fact, we only have to program a few simple lines of code. So, in the loader class, in the load texture method, we're going to add these new lines. So first we generate all of the lower resolution versions of the texture by calling gl generate mip map and then we put in the type of the texture. And then we just have to tell OpenGL to use these lower resolution images. So we call gl text parameter i, we put in the texture type and then we tell it that we are defining its behavior for when the texture is rendered onto a surface with smaller dimensions than the texture. So when the surface is far away, for example, or at an angle to the camera, that means that the texture covers up a much smaller number of pixels on the screen than it would if rendered at full size. So now we tell it what to do when this happens, and that is to use the MIP maps that we generated. And these linear parts here basically tell it to transition smoothly between different texture resolutions. The opposite of this would be to use the nearest keyword which makes the transitions a lot less smooth. So if you run that you can see the MIP mapping in action here with the textures further away from the camera being rendered at lower resolutions. But perhaps this is a bit too obvious for your liking so we can lessen the effect of the MIP mapping very simply. Back in the code we add one more line which is going to set another parameter for the texture and it will be a float parameter so that's why we're using the GL text parameter F this time. So this is going to set the textures LOD bias or level of detail bias and if you put a negative number in here it makes the textures get rendered at a slightly higher resolution all over depending on how negative you make the number. So we'll go for minus one here and you can see that the MIP mapping is now less noticeable but you don't want to make it too negative otherwise you'll start to lose the increase in performance that MIP mapping can give you. So I'm going to stick with minus 0.4 and that looks pretty nice now. And there's one other big advantage of using MIP maps. If you have a look at the terrain in the distance when you don't use MIP maps, you can see how much it flickers. That's because the textures are much too high a resolution for the number of pixels that they take up on the screen here. There's too much detail to be displayed in that area. But MIP mapping fixes this and you no longer have any annoying flickering textures in the distance. So that is it for this week. Sorry again for it being a bit of a quick one, but I should be able to cover more material in next week's tutorial. If you have any questions then feel free to get in contact with me via Facebook, Twitter or email. Links are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.